Friday night at the garage during the summer. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, during the winter time, I really miss this when I'm cooped up down at the house doing videos down there. You know, it's still fun to do, but still, yet, yeah, it's nothing compared to what it is up here during these warm summer nights. Hello everybody, I'm Mark. You're watching the Garage Guy 879 channel. Tonight is Friday night, July 30th. Yeah, the 30th. The month is almost gone. 2021. Now from the title of the video, you already know what this is about. And I want to focus here for a second on the unknown classic part. The reason I say that is when I think of Rossi firearms, I can't think of any firearms made by Rossi that might be considered a classic unless it might be that, uh, what he calls circuit judge, that rifle or shotgun with the rotating uh, revolver cylinder. Yeah, that's classic. You know, I'd love to have one of them, but right now I can't find one. But anyhow, I run across something unexpectedly from a co-worker. Now, we all remember Patrick from some of my earlier videos. You know, loud and happy Patrick. Hey, I didn't miss a shot. Yeah, that's Patrick. Anyhow, he is that good a shot. He does not miss. He's like Buffalo. If you miss, you miss on purpose. <laughs> kind of make the rest of us feel normal, I guess. But anyhow... Uh, this video is about something I run across unexpectedly, and it is really sweet. And as far as being classic, you know, you have an instant classic. But as far as something that not a lot of people knows about, then I could say this might be an unknown classic, okay? Excuse me, SpongeBob. Hello, Jay Lee. Set it down here on my new gong. I got a couple of these last Saturday at Highland Arms in Abingdon, Virginia. I want to say hello to everybody down there on the staff. Hope you all are doing well. Mr. Sanders, Josh, Jerry, everybody. Never got a bad deal down there. Anyhow, I'm going to open this case up. Right here is the subject of the video, and this is what you have to admit to be a very beautiful little revolver, J-frame sized. I'm talking the Rossi Model 68 Chamber 38 Special. You know, this thing is nice. Let's do a safety check here right quick. Open the cylinder up. As you can see, it's empty. Turn it around right here. Let's give it a look real quick. Five round capacity. And, uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up that good in this light, but there is not one bit of carbon scoring on here. Whoever owned this before me either kept it really clean, spent a lot of time cleaning it, or didn't fire that many rounds through it. It's just that simple. Beautiful. And you might say this is the granddaddy to a modern day revolver put out by Taurus today. All right. The first little bit of information about this revolver, and I got this from Wikipedia, Wikipedia, however you want to pronounce it. The Model 68 was introduced in 1978. It was an adaptation of the Model 27 Pioneer revolver, and a snubby version was a close copy of the Smith & Wesson Model 36 and was produced under license from Smith & Wesson on Smith & Wesson machinery in Brazil. Now, I want to bring up the trigger and hammer action on that because if it was produced on Smith & Wesson machinery, who's not to say there wasn't Smith & Wesson internals used in making some of these right here because the hammer and trigger action is just too freaking sweet and it rivals any Smith & Wesson revolver made back in those days. Now I would say this is an early to uh, middle 80s model right here is when this was made. Now as far as trigger and hammer action goes, I'm going to aim and point in safe direction, pull back here as you can see 
you have the firing pin on the hammer. Now, a lot of people from my research online, and there really isn't that much information online about this model revolver. There's a lot of info about the Model 88, but not the 68. But a lot of people, the only flaw that they really had about it was the firing pin right here. But they get online and uh, get on the new merch website, and they would order replacements. Wasn't no big deal. Just knock the pin out, put a new one in, put the pin back in, good to go. Now, I'm not really going to dry fire this, but, you know, single action... Point name safe direction right here. Yeah, that's got to be two pounds, maybe less. Now, double action, let's go ahead and stage this. If we can, like a modern Smith or Taurus. Oh, yeah, you hear that click? Hold it all day long. I've said that before, and I'm going to say it a whole lot more times afterwards. Okay? Now, to finish on here, it's not nickel, it's stainless steel, and it's a very nice stainless steel finish on here, too. If it was nickel finish, it would be worth a lot more. But a high-end Model 68 in this day and time goes anywhere from, I don't know, 300 to 350 And that's a shame. This is a beautiful firearm, and yes, I'm going to keep bragging about it throughout this video. Now, the grips on here kind of a mid to dark walnut grips reminiscent of Smith & Wesson grips of that era. We'll get that right here. Nice, real nice. Not one mark, not one scratch on this. Leads me to believe whoever had this bought it, put it up, figured well they'd use it for home defense or something like that. I think maybe they put it up and maybe they forgot about it. You know, to be honest, a lot of people have done that. As a matter of fact, I forgot about a Marlin Model 60 for over two years at one time. <laughs> yeah, I got that here on my channel too. Anyhow, you know, uh, the sights on here, you have a ramp front sight, which is reminiscent of some Taurus revolver sights from back in that era. And flat back right there you have the notched rear sight you know back in Taurus Smith and Wesson and Rossi was owned by the same company and the designs were shared okay now a lot of people may say well it was Taurus and Smith not Rossi who knows it, it's just too reminiscent you know it's the same thing. I feel like I'm looking at a uh, 856 Defender right here. You know, it, it, it's beautiful. And these here back in the day were distributed by Inter Arms out of Virginia for distribution in the United States. That started back in the 1970s and lasted until 1997. Then Rossi founded Brostech for distribution in North America. Kind of had their own thing going on. But since 2010, Rossi no longer makes firearms for the Brazilian market. As a matter of fact, they mostly make air guns, which is a very popular sport in a lot of South American countries. Now, you can still find uh, firearms with the Rossi brand on them, found in foreign markets. And there's a moth on my shades here. It's gone. But anyway, you can find Rossi firearms found in foreign markets. And those foreign markets, I mean by that, foreign to Brazil. They're made by Amadio Rossi or Taurus. You'll still find some. You know, let's say, for example, like the 14-gauge single-shot shotgun called the Tuffy. I like that little shotgun. It's pretty decent. You know, this ain't a big time collector's find or anything like that. It doesn't have a whole lot of value according to what I read, but still yet. It's a beautiful piece of work right here. 
you know, uh, has no internal locks, no hillary holes or anything like that. I have yet to fire this. That'll be on a video coming up later on. And I am going to be doing a comparison video with this Model 68 and the present day Taurus Model 856 Defender because if you ask me, they are pretty much the same firearm. The Model 68 lives on. You know, uh, I wasn't even aware of this Model Rossi until I found it. Let me tell you how I found it. One of my co-workers, John Wayne, he did some work for an uncle, and he gave him this revolver. Well, John Wayne decided he didn't need it. He's got a few other firearms. He sold it to Patrick for $150. I saw this, checked out the hammer and trigger action, gave it a good going over. I gave Patrick $225 for it. <coughs> yeah, he made $50 profit, but, you know, if you could see this in person, you could understand why. It, this is beautiful. It's got a nice balance to it. Got a real good line of sight. Nothing out of the ordinary. You know, and the hammer and trigger action, I'll say it again. Smith and Wesson quality of that era. Hammer and trigger action. I can't wait to fire it. <coughs> Excuse me, my friends. Getting a little coughed up here. Hot during the day, kind of cool during the evenings. That's yeah, going to happen. Anyhow, I'm going to get off here. I'm Mark, Garage Gate 79. Hope you enjoyed this video. <coughs> Excuse me one more time. I plan on doing a first shots video and a comparison video with the 856 Defender. Hope you all will check out my channel and give those videos a look. All right. When you go shooting, please be safe.